Hey guys, welcome back to Honeycomb and today we're going to be doing our review of the Nike Motiva. Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this video. If you missed the unboxing of this sneaker, we did this with a big box of other things in a 1111 haul and that is on a previous video. So you can uh, find that if you go to our page. While you're at our page, do click subscribe and while you're on this video, click like. All right, so we're gonna dive right into the sneaker, into the review side of the video, instead of doing an unboxing and that stuff because we've already done it. So jumping right into the Nike Motiva, this is a sneaker that I've now been wearing for uh, about two weeks, uh, on and off, but it's been my primary shoe for all two weeks. And the reason why is because I really wanted to give this shoe a very comprehensive review versus the kind of reviews that we're often able to do, which are shorter, right? Or the ones that we often have to do, which are shorter um, kind of first impression videos. I felt like this is a sneaker that's been out for half a year. And a lot of the people who reviewed it gave that short impression, that kind of review. But we had the opportunity to be able to wear it over and over and give a more comprehensive review of what I think of the sneaker is it worth it? Uh, we got it on sale if you see in that other video. I explained how much I got it for and whether or not this was something that was a good pickup or if it's a right shoe for you. So with that in mind, let's dive into the Nike Motiva. First off the bat, sizing. Sizing this sneaker does fit true to size. It's a little bit wide here in the forefoot and I think the reason why is it's supposed to be able to accommodate the swelling of your foot as you walk around all day, but also be able to accommodate a whole host of people's sizes. So I would think that a lot of walking shoes are intended for older people, you know, particularly with the style on this sneaker and we'll get into that later. I think that this is basically targeted at a significantly older audience than the rest of Nike's walking and running uh, sneaker platforms. Because of that, you expect a wider foot base. Now your foot does collapse over the years that you use them. So you start out with like higher arches, even if you have flat feet, and then throughout time, your foot kind of flattens out, splays out. And so this is intended for a more, let's call it an expanded foot. And you do feel it, there is quite a bit of room in there, and that's a good thing. Now as with all reviews, we're gonna start from the bottom up, starting with the traction. Now the traction on this sneaker is interesting. It has waffle on the toe and then it has this bumpy uh, kind of concentric circle pattern, like semi-circle pattern. And then in the heel you have the waffle come back again. Inside that outsole there is some holes for kind of expansion and, and stretching. But aside from that, there is also this three-dimensional aspect to the uh, outsole and midsole which turns out to be really important for the sneaker. If I turn it back and forth a bit, you can see that there are bumps. And it's more than just what you see here on the profile, which is this wave here. It actually undulates in both directions. So it's a three-dimensional, kind of like the Bohol Chocolate Mountains pattern where it's many, many bumps and they're quite large. To be honest, when I first tried on this shoe in Taipei, when it first came out, like the week it came out, it came out there first and it wasn't available in the Philippines. I happened to be in Taipei at the time and I tried them on and this was a feature I didn't like at first. I thought that it felt a little unstable, a little bumpy, uh, but after wearing it a few weeks, I found that that really is a feature that breaks in really well. Once you've broken in the shoes and it only takes about one or two days, those little bumps or those big bumps actually add to the compression factor and increase the kind of springiness of the sneaker, which is fantastic. Again, those slices in the outsole allow for the sneaker to kind of flex this way, right? To bend and flex and allow it to make better forward kind of rocking footsteps as you walk throughout the day. Again, this is a walking shoe, not a running shoe. Now, when you get that, let's talk about the midsole, which has that very exaggerated rocker through it. So when we talk about this sneaker, we try to talk about all sneakers with like this outsole, midsole, insole system. Uh, but with this shoe, it really is very integrated. It, it's very three-dimensional when you think about 
how this shoe is designed. And you do feel it, this rocker shape, this curved shape that it curves up in the heel and the toe, you feel it when you put it on and you feel it when you walk throughout the day. Well, your heel is kind of lifted off the ground when you're wearing these sneakers. So it really tends to want to move you forward or rock you forward. That's a good thing. It means that as you're walking throughout the day, it kind of carries your momentum forward, right? So you're using less effort to take the same amount of steps. On top of that, this midsole is made of Cushion 3.0 and the cushioning is incredible. Again, it took a little bit of break-in period, but once I had broken it in over two days, it was impeccable. And I honestly only real, uh, realized it after wearing it for like three days back to back, taking them off and putting on my, my uh, Vermero 5s, which is a very, very comfortable lightweight retro. And they were just so much stiffer in comparison compared to these. So that is a big pro. These are one of the most comfortable sneakers that I have owned in years. And all the Nikes I've owned, this is one of the most comfortable pairs. Big plus. I also find myself reaching to wear these sneakers because of that underfoot comfort and overfoot comfort. So let's get to that. Let's talk about the uppers of this sneaker. It's not clear to me exactly what they're made of. Visually, they look like fly knit. They feel like fly knit, but they're not the same stretchiness as a lot of fly knit that I've had over the years. So it feels like it's a knit construction, but it isn't, um, isn't, it isn't that stretchy style of fly knit. In fact, it kind of uses a dual layer upper, meaning that this exterior is not what makes contact with your feet. You can see it stretching there. And then underneath, there's kind of a neoprene booty inside. Usually we would say this was gusseted. It's not, it's just one continuous booty going in. But it is all very soft and your foot just slips in when you're putting it on. Again, true to size, very, very comfortable. And then throughout the day, uh, because of that dual layer, there is some uh, warmth that builds up inside of it, but not a lot. And because it's not a running shoe, it's not designed to vent like sweat and heat quite at the same efficiency as a running shoe would. That said, it does have decent breathability and excellent containment for all day walking. Uh, I just want to touch really quickly on the insole. The insole is, uh, it's glued in, but it is an Ortholite style insole. So I don't know if it's Ortholite brand, but it's Ortholite style, meaning it's a thin layer of foam. Now, it doesn't really matter because that Cushlon 3.0 is so thick and accommodate so much of your uh, step in comfort that you just forget about what kind of insole. It's almost like the insole doesn't matter on this sneaker. It's bowed inwards on the outside and then bowed outwards on the inside of your shoe to kind of negate a lot of the, or protect you from pronation, from over pronation. Around the collar of the shoe, which is this part where your Achilles goes in and your ankles, it's there's some extra padding. That's really nice. That's a nice feature, as well as this little hit of vault on the back in this faux suede, AKA felt. It does make for a nice pop of color. It looks like a tennis ball, it feels like a tennis ball. And your foot sits very comfortably in there. In fact, one of the best things about this sneaker is that that heel cup is very stable and holds your foot in place, which is really important for not getting tired wearing a pair of shoes all day. And people almost never talk about it. They always talk about the comfort underfoot, but the support here is equally or even more important sometimes. So that's something I really liked and how this felt on top of my foot like a booty. So those are all the pros of the sneaker. Here are the cons. I do not like the way that this shoe looks. Uh, it, my daughter, okay, my daughter, who's 11 years old, came up to me and said, hey, Papa, how come you're wearing shoes like a grandpa? <laughs> she asked me that. She asked me why I chose to wear these shoes that look like a grandpa shoes. And she's not wrong. My father does wear sneakers that look like this, although I have bought him some very cool sneakers over the years. He's wearing P6000s now, which is like the quintessential dad shoe. I really like those. But she's not wrong. This, is, this looks like a kind of shoe that my father would buy. And if you are someone around the age of my father, this is perfect for you. If you're, uh, what, let's say 60 and above, what you really want is a shoe like this, which has 
you know, has max cushion for your age, lots of support, lots of breathability, and lots of flexibility in the upper without sacrificing support. Those are some really good features of this sneaker. However, aesthetically, I would, I would place this at like a four, like below average for me, as far as Nike's go. Now Nike has some really cool, really slick looking sneakers. You see it in some of our other reviews, but this one is not a slick and cool looking upper. But if you compare this to the React X Infinity Run flying it that we reviewed a few weeks ago, a couple months ago, uh, it doesn't look anywhere as cool as that shoe. But it is equally or more comfortable underfoot as a walker, not as a runner. But as a walker, equally or more comfortable underfoot than that React X shoe. But style-wise, not at all. It's just, this is not a stylish shoe, unless you're looking for a very norm core, uh, not even dad shoe vibe. This is like grandpa chic. So I think one of my main problems with this sneaker is just that webbing on the front. Like if you look at that webbing, like it, it's not very cool. Like it looks like they're trying to be cool, but in like a, kind of like a year 2007 graphic designer way, which that might be your aesthetic. If it's your aesthetic, go for it. Uh, and here's the thing, right? This said, I have a lot of very aesthetically pleasing shoes, a lot of fashionable shoes, but when I'm reaching for a shoe to go for the day, this is a shoe I reach for and that's amazing, right? I don't think I can give a better review than that. On the days that I don't care when I'm running to the store, going to the mall or somewhere that I really don't feel the need to be, I guess, stylish for lack of a better term. This is a really good sneaker for that, for running errands, for all day comfort. It's a really good shoe. This is a great sneaker. And if you can get it at a discount, first, I, after owning it, I realized I would pay full price for these sneakers um, for the comfort, for the comfort. Uh, but on discount, it's a steal. If you can find this sneaker on discount, absolutely go for it. Um, if you find that it matches your aesthetic in a way that it doesn't really match mine, then go for it. I don't think you can make a mistake picking up a sneaker that is this comfortable. And it is super comfortable. On a scale of one to 10, it's a 10 as far as sneakers go today. They don't have that over softness, over squishiness. They're stable, they're soft, and then they're for long days. Sometimes if a sneaker is too soft, it gets tiresome to wear throughout the entire day. Doesn't happen with this sneaker, which I think is the miracle of Kushlon and Kushlon 3.0. All right, so that's my review of the Nike Motiva. If you've been thinking of purchasing this and you need some advice, I hope this helps you in making your decision. Again, I don't think it looks very cool, but on foot, what a performer. I can go you know, tens of thousands of steps a day. I think my max in this sneaker was 15,000 steps in a single day. And man, do they hold up? Were they comfortable? I did enjoy uh, wearing them a lot. You just have to break them in around two days. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a comment below if you have any more comments about this or questions, I'd be glad to help you. In the meantime, I wish you guys good luck, good health, great pickups, peace.